All praise to the Most High, Yahuwah Elohim, by way of His only begotten Son, Yahushua Hamashiach, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. Uh, shalom, shalom. It's Passover week. Happy Passover to anybody that's, you know, keeping a keeping keeping these feast days. These days are very important. These are the holy days of Yahuwah, right? Um, not the holy days of Jews, but these are are Yah's holy days. That's what He proclaims them as in His Word. Now, we keep the Passover a week ahead of the rest of the world as according to the word of God that's been given to us. Um, but this is a beautiful time of reflection, you know what I'm saying, for us to also get recentered and to get reestablished into the things of God, right? Um, if you know the original Passover story, then you know that the children of Israel were in the land of Egypt and the Most High Yah was coming to deliver them, you know, and he was bringing judgment on the Egyptians, right? And so in doing so, um, there was a final judgment into where, you know, the Lord had protected the Israelites up until this point. But um, there was a final judgment that was given where the children of Israel will have to uh, they will have to get a lamb. They will have to sacrifice this lamb and they would take the blood of the lamb to put it on the doorpost so that they would be passed over during judgment. You understand what I'm saying? And so. Um, now, this is all symbology. This is all typography of the coming lamb, which was Christ, which is Yahushua, the only the only begotten son of God. You understand who comes, what, 2,000 or so years later, fulfilling what was done in the, um, in the children, you know, with the children of Israel, you know, which is, um, you know, just a beautiful thing. And, and these are the proofs that we have as according to, as the Bible say, we have a more sure word of prophecy because, um, you know, there's no way for anybody to concoct the type of things and the type of fulfillments and the symbology and things that's written in the scriptures. Um, so this was all significant of Christ. Christ is our ultimate Passover lamb, right? It's his blood that was shed for us to be able to go from death unto life, for us to not come into, into judgment, right? And so God was giving this to the children of Israel as a symbol of what was to come, the ultimate sacrifice of what was to take place. And so on this day, you know, we, uh, you know, this week we acknowledge Christ and we acknowledge his sacrifice for us. You understand? Um, a lot of people don't uh, know or understand that Christ was crucified during Passover um, um, at, at the time when he was here. And that's because God was fulfilling not only the, his, the historicity of what he did with the children of Israel, but he was fulfilling the Passover and actually providing the lamb for us to be sacrificed, you know what I mean, on the actual Passover day when they were keeping it at that time. Right. So this is around the time that Christ was crucified. And so um, um, we know that the Lord was taken and was taken to trial on Tuesday. He was crucified by Wednesday night. He slept in a grave for three days and three nights. The Lord rose on Shabbat at sundown um, between Shabbat and between the dawning of Sunday, the first day of the week, because uh, he appeared to them. Um, as the, as the day was beginning to dawn, um, on the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary, he appeared to his disciples, but, um, but he had got up out of the grave, um, at sunset on the Sabbath. You understand? Because the Sabbath is from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. And so even in the Messiah's death, he kept the Sabbath day. He didn't, he didn't come up out of the grave until, until sundown. Um, I just think that that's just dope. That's incredible. But um, so um, the ways in which we try to acknowledge this day and we try to keep this day is by just going in accordance with the situation of what was going on with, with Christ. Right. So with Yahushua, we watched the Passion of Christ on Tuesdays, uh, Tuesday nights, because that was the time when they were coming and they was arresting him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And uh, they take him, they go to trial, they take him back and forth to Pontius Pilate and the Herod, you know what I mean? Um, neither one of them really want to convict him because they know he's not guilty of anything. Um, but the religious leaders, you know, it's always the religious leaders, right? They were 
they were um, firm in their decision and you know they pushed for Rome to execute to execute Christ you understand now now we know that this is the most highest plan we know that Christ is um, laying down his life and no man takes it from him and so we watched that in um, in conjunction with what was happening to him on that day um, Wednesday he, him being crucified and then being put in the grave and so for these three days of him being in the grave um, uh, and him being crucified and in, in partaking with his affliction, we afflict ourselves, right? And we do some fasting. We do some form of fasting, um, uh, try to do our best, on, you know, for uh, each day that, that the Most High was in, in the grave. Tomorrow, we as a family are going to all do food, you know, um, but we have um, certain certain other things, you know, we, 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 we have to you know, um, still take care of certain business and different things of that nature. So we will fast other things. And then tomorrow we're going to all do, do food together as a family up until Saturday, Saturday, we're going to come together. Um, and we're going to celebrate the Passover. Why would we celebrate? Because we're doing everything in conjunction with the process that Christ went through. And we will celebrate because Saturday at sundown is when Christ came up out of that grave. You know what I'm saying? And so, we uh, come together and we feast and we celebrate on Saturday, you know, and uh, and we fulfill the entire week of Passover. And so I guess I'm just speaking on this to let people know the importance of these things, because we keep a lot of man-made holidays like Easter, like uh, Christmas and different things of that nature. They're not really teaching you the true fulfillment of the word of God and the prophecies of God, the holy days are very significant. And I'm speaking about Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, um, First Fruits, Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, right? Um, um, uh, the Feast, of, the uh, the Day of Atonement, you understand? And, um, and uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is actually giving you the progression of how everything is going to be fulfilled in the, in the world and Christ's fulfillment of them. So Christ fulfilled the first holy days in his first coming, Passover, unleavened bread, and um, first fruits in his crucifixion and his death and his resurrection. He fulfilled that. When he comes back, he's coming to fulfill the last of the holy days, which is the Feast of Trumpets, which is, um, you know... Um, is the the gathering of his saints, which some people may may refer to as the resurrection, some people may refer to as the rapture, the harvest. He's going to gather his saints. He's going to bring judgment, um, the day of atonement, and then he's going to also establish his kingdom on earth, and we will dwell or we will tabernacle with him. And so that's the feast of tabernacles. You understand? So these days, I know that they're not being taught. In the churches of men, but they are very significant to the Most High Yah, and it's something that you know um, believers of all kinds need to really understand and, and to get in tune with because these are rehearsals. You understand of the things that are to take place and the things that, um, and for us to be in line, we want to be in line with God's calendar. We want to be in line with what He's doing and what He's where He's pushing us to. Um, in going forward from Passover, it's just a time of reestablishing, you know, and realigning yourself with the most high. And so, um, you know, and getting getting back to work in regards to the things that he's called for us to do. And so this is a, always a good push off start for you. If you if you have fell off in any type of way, if you have stepped aside, if you've become lackadaisical, you know, the feast and the holy days are always a good recentering. You know what I'm saying? And that's another reason why people should listen and, and take heed to them you know what i mean and so um yeah i just wanted to speak on speak on it today speak on passover help people to get a certain get a certain level of understanding understand what time that we living in um as far as us being in the end times and in the, in the living in these last days and also as far as being in time in time with god's calendar that we are living right now during the time of which these events actually took place these, you know, Christ was actually crucified, you know what I mean, and died and resurrected for, and he did all of this, he went through all of these things for our sakes, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, not because he didn't have power to stop it, 
not because he couldn't call legions of angels or anything, but he sacrificed his life, you know what I mean, for for his children, for the children whom he loved. So, you know, we just want to try to reflect on him and to show our love back and return to it, to him. So I believe that's all that I have to say. I can't think of anything right else right now at this moment, but I just wanted to come on here and to speak on Passover and allow people to know and understand what time that we are living in, you know, and um, and to invite people or motivate people to get recentered in God and to get focused on him and get focused on his word um, because time is drawing short and, you know, when you do keep these days and you stay in line with God's moving and the things that he has established rather than the world, then you are more in line with his spirit. You understand? Because if these things, if God is pouring out his spirit into these different things, then you being aligned with that, God is, God is pouring out his spirit on you. You're one with the most high. You're one with what he's doing and how he's moving. You understand what I'm saying? And so don't miss out. You know, when God is moving, don't miss out when God is moving. Um, I think that right now it's a time for everybody to make decisions, you know, about what side of the fence they're going to stand on. You know, um, you know, I would probably say that whatever people decide to be right now is probably where they're going to be right up until the day of the Lord. You know, so uh, make sure that what you standing on is something that you're willing to die on. Make sure that what you believe in are things that you are willing to die for. You know what I'm saying? Are you all of the, the things that you th believe, the conclusions that you've come to? Because I'm going to die on this hill. I'm, I promise you. I'm going to die on this hill. I may even be killed on this hill. You understand? And I'm and I'm and I'm I'm not going to say that I'm ready for that, but I am mentally satisfied with that spiritually emotionally and everything because i know who my creator is i know who my savior is without a shadow of a doubt i'm a thousand percent sure i'm willing to stamp my flag i'm willing to you know what i'm saying i'm willing to give my life for the for on this hill for yahushua because i know who he is and i know what the truth is are you truly that persuaded in the things that you believe are you truly that persuaded and, and will you stand on, are the things that you even believe worth dying for? You understand? Are they worth stamping your flag and saying, yeah, this is the hill that I'm going to die on? And you have to ask yourself that question. But for me, when it comes to this word of God, when it comes to Yahushua um, and the Most High, I'm going to die here. And, and I'm proud of that. You know, there's no turning away. There's no turning back for me. You understand what I'm saying? Um, the Most High has has made it clear. He has assured me of who He is, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, so um, so yeah. Everybody, make sure that your convictions and stuff are that strong. Whatever it is that you're about, whatever it is that you stand on, stand on it because you're gonna be there right up until the day of the Lord. And those are the thing that every whatever it is that you're leaning on. I pray and hope that it's a real foundation for you. But I know what my foundation is, and I know that every other foundation is going to crack in that day. And I don't want to be standing on nothing but Yahushua. So, um, yeah, just wanted to come on and make this video speak on it. You know what I mean? Also, um, I put out a syllabus um, about things that I was going to be doing and speaking of this year. I believe those things will be beginning now, you know, um, after the Passover. I have to move in accordance with everything that the Lord's spirit does, you know, and my obedience to his spirit. And so, um, you know, let's get back to work and let's get our eyes focused and centered on the most high. All praise to the most high, Yahuwah Elohim, by way of his only begotten son, Yahushua, Hamashiach, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. It's your boy, Sam Noble.